You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ and Darren. China dominates the news. Nigeria holds an exorcism, and the end of oil subsidies in Mexico has led to riots. All this and more on episode 190 here on Wednesday, January 11th, 2017. Darren. Yes, uh, in the traditional markets, we have gold up to 1192. Silver's up to $16.69. Oil is down to $52.38. The Dow Jones is up to 19,952 points. And the 30-year Treasury yield drops to under 3% at 2.952%. Uh, the euro is up, buying $1.06. And the Chinese yuan is uh, pretty buys, steady. It still buys 14 cents. And the British pound is down to a dollar twenty-two. That was, uh, I believe, due to uh, Theresa May's uh, some of her comments. And the big worry there is that the uh, the uh, Britain economy or the UK economy will not be able to be a part of the single single um, uh, market. Right. So, and and why not? I mean, you're leaving the euro. Of course. What do you expect that that to do? Right. I right. mean, you kind of. It's it's it should be connected, don't you think? Yeah. Anyway, getting into the Bitcoin markets, everything is down this week, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the show. Uh, Bitcoin is at seven hundred eighty nine dollars. Litecoin at three dollars and eighty nine cents. The uh, Zcash drops to forty dollars and five cents. Dash drops to eleven dollars and thirty four cents. Ethereum down to nine dollars and seventy two cents. Monero is down to eleven dollars and sixty cents. And Augur Rep tokens are down to three dollars and eighty one cents. Darren, uh, what's Doge doing? Well. Surprisingly, one Doge is still trading at one Doge. Wow! So. Just a reminder that you can tune in Neo Cash every Wednesday night. Don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neo Cash content, including special episodes and bonus interviews. Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Podcast Addict, Library, and more. We're just about everywhere nowadays, Darren. Yeah. Wow. That's so, <clears throat> starting out a little close to home, so to speak. Uh, this show is definitely an international show, but I got a story out of Mexico. So a 20% increase in the price of gas has, was enacted nationwide at the turn of the new year, and people are rising up. The move was met or, meant to better align the prices of gasoline to international levels. Looting, violence, riots, and much worse have occurred over the past week. In El Paso, hundreds of protesters mobbed the Mexican customs booths, allowing free flow of cars for about an hour. The plan was a deregulation of the energy sector, which has been dominated by the government oil monopoly, Pemex. The cut in subsidies is needed for more private investment and energy providers to move into the market and compete effectively. But this is not going over well with the people there in Mexico. Of course, the the actual price uh, increase, and while 20% is is very substantial, I mean, that that would cause a lot of people to be upset anywhere in the world. But in Mexico especially, because the price was kept, the, the, the subsidies kept the price artificially low because the economy in Mexico is is also suffering uh since trump took office in fact i believe the peso fell about 21 percent and uh to the dollar of course and the the people there of course they're they're still having to buy normal goods they're you know the, this cuts into food to, to buy gas and such and so the the looting and whatnot it's it's just i mean it's getting out of control there i don't i don't see a way around what's going on have you kept up with this darren Yes, I, I I actually did see the video. Uh, but where where was this border? Uh, it was in El pa- uh, the El Paso Juarez border. There's a bridge, right? And so um, apparently the the bridge and the boots got just hundreds of people came and 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 it was only lasted for about an hour. It, it wasn't like they they took control of it for days or weeks or anything. But um, and that's uh, one one of the stories. So. I, I, it's it's like uh, this is kind of the problem with subsidies. I mean, this this is the issue, uh, the un, the unseen, if you will, right. is that you can't maintain subsidies forever. And then when you do remove those subsidies in a flight switch type effect, it has this reaction. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the story here. Is what did you expect to happen? You 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 were artificially keeping prices down to make people happy to get reelected. I mean, this is all stuff that was enacted previous to this current president. Uh-huh. So this is like Vincente Fox and, and things like that. And the fact that you have a government oil monopoly, you know, that 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 could be a big a big uh, a red flag there too. Yes. You know, so yeah. not only is there subsidies, then now everything all the gas is is nationalized, right? Right. And now you want to okay, I like the idea of 
uh, doing the steps necessary to bring in competition, but maybe you should, maybe a more gradual slide would have been more advisable. I, I don't know. I don't know how yeah, else to handle I, this. I, I, I don't know. It's a bad situation all around. That's right. Well, moving on, uh, Nigerian exorcism banishes 50,000 ghosts on the government payrolls. Making good on his promise to stamp out graft, Nigerian President Mahamud Varumhai uh, Buhari yes, announced the updates, including the removal of 50,000 workers from the federal government payrolls. The news doesn't end there. Last week, the Nigerian government made promises to protect and reward whistleblowers. Dozens of people connected with former President Goodluck Jonathan's regime have been charged with graft, and several senior, senior judges are facing charges of bribery, fraud, and money laundering. So a lot of rooting out that that corruption is going on in Nigeria. I mean, much the same... I mean, it's relating a little bit to the previous story with Mexico, is that the government had all these all these fraud... And this is this kind of goes and connects to... We, we had a story, I think, last week, uh, or the week before, talking about India, and how... With the demonetization, they're looking at government officials, and they're they're targeting them for investi- investigations and and to graft and and money laundering and things like that. So it, it's it just seems uh, a common story. Here's one in Nigeria. Uh, moving on, we got we're going to talk a bunch about China in this week's show, Darren. Um, the the Chinese they're having some debt problems. Yeah, they're having some debt problems. They've uh, they have over. Well, just March of this year, uh, it was a number I could get. Uh, they have over four point three trillion dollars of of debt. That's it. That's uh, converted to U.S. dollars, so it's over twenty eight trillion yuan, and it's gone up much since March, and uh, it's it's been booming. And so, one thing I've thought when I did my analysis of uh, how China is going to play out in the long term is I thought they were going to have a very strong currency. Because they have over a trillion dollars worth of U.S. loans. But at the same time, uh, China's been building these uh, ghost cities and right. other things. And, and that costs a lot of money. And uh, they, they borrow to do much of that. And so, uh, and so the result is that they have, they have all these assets, but yet they have these, these tremendous liabilities that... Uh, could be be significant in this year in 2017. So, uh, so I think that's a, a concern for China to have uh, with their debt. I, I saw some articles about it this uh, this past week, and uh, let's see, I've got one on the notes. And they're they're, uh, they're constantly having to dump currency to try to keep the yuan at, yuan buying fourteen cents, right? Right? Again, it, yeah. It's again they're trying to manipulate markets, and, and right. yes, they've had to intervene a few times to uh, keep their uh, currency around the level they're sh- targeting. Right. And so. and you know, I mean, I guess the common theme of today's show when we're talking about China is that, uh, and you'll get we'll see with the, the next stories too, is that they they are doing the, the iron fist of control is coming out. The, the Chinese sort of communist party fist of control of, of a lot of different things and, and and debt is one and controlling the currency and the value of the currency is one yep and the, and the next stories we'll talk about that control is, is spreads to other areas of life as well but this this I mean I think that this is the actual systemic problem that leads to the issues that we're going to talk about later is that this debt this looming debt and then borrowing and then these ghost cities as you're saying not only did they cost money to to uh, build these cities, and and it's it's if they want to keep them maintained while they're empty, they need to pay the maintenance of, of right. that those properties as well. Otherwise, they're just going to fall apart. Right. And then not only did you invest in something that isn't occupied, now you're invested in something that you basically throw threw away. Right. So it's like a double double whammy. And the, and the other part is that because you have these state backed uh, organizations doing the work, you know, taking out the loans, you know, you have the Communist Party. Uh, is basically on the hook for all of this stuff. It's not like uh, here in the United States, like if, if say, um, some contractor built a whole bunch of houses and you couldn't sell the houses, well, that contractor would go under. The, right. the government would just be like, well, I guess, you, you know, too bad for you. I mean, it sucks. Right. But in China, when the contractor is the government, then the government goes under. And as we talked about, the the the, the biggest investor, the biggest uh um, property owner in China, some some billionaire is moving out of buying properties and into uh, more of a tourist type and entertainment 
uh, that sort of stuff. He he claims that the the bubble is about to burst. So I think we're seeing some of those things. And moving on to our next story, China's central bank has met with the Bitcoin exchanges. In Sh- the Shanghai office of the People's Bank of China met with OKCoin, OK Huobi, and BTC uh, BTCC exchanges, and they were scolded for the fu- fluctuating p- price, Darren. Like that, right? Or, I don't. <laughs> I don't, like, like they have any control over that, right? It's it's weird. Now, now there are reports that the Chinese exchanges over-report the volume and and maybe sort of add to the uh, the velocity of money, if you will, by by hyping up volume numbers. But uh, the other the other thing that the uh, People's Bank Bank of China was was scolding about was not to mention the weak yuan, yuan when advertising their services. And in an effort to stop capital flight, uh, the meeting, the news of this meeting shook the market and the price of Bitcoin. China is the biggest player in the Bitcoin mining game with about two thirds the hash power and capital outflows were also brought up. Once again, China's control over keeping money in China. Now, there's little evidence to suggest that it's happening. The central bank officials reminded the exchanges to be vigilant. Bitcoin is not regulated in China and instead treated as a digital good. So Chinese, once again, they're, they're worried about people getting out of the yuan or at least people not, not being under the same pressure as their neighbors and, and then going along with the game and doing what they have to do. So this, this is actually a really big story because this is one of the, the, the many fears about Bitcoin that is actually real is that the fact that China has such a, a massive amount of the hashing power and such a big vested interest in the Bitcoin network and then the Chinese, you know, the people, the, the People's Party of China, or whatever the, the Communist Party of China is called, like them stepping in and be like, well, no, now it's ours, right? Now, right. now we're nationalizing you. Like that is the big worry. And I think we're seeing that with, with this here, with, with the market reaction. I mean, it was over, it was over 1,100 last time we reported, right. last week. And I think it went higher. I think it went up to 1,200 at some point. Um, and then this news came out and it's dropped. Uh, a, a Seven, third, yes, a third of its value, roughly, right. maybe more, and like th- this is a very real concern for anybody that's into Bitcoin. Is what's going to happen with China and the Chinese government? And now, right now, the latest news, especially from BTCC, is that they have not been told to do anything verbally or written. Like they haven't been given no like orders or directives or anything yet. But the fact that the the Chinese, uh, the Shanghai office of the People's Bank of China is meeting with them right now. They're, I mean, this is desperate times for China, right? And, and Bitcoin is definitely a way out. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, moving on to our next Chinese story, as if they wanted to keep the, the capital from flowing out, they also want to stop ideas from coming in. So Apple pulls the New York Times app in China. The New York Times published a story about a Chinese propaganda video. The video was warning about Western culture with a focus on subversive elements. Uh, Chinese authorities reportedly told Apple to pull the New York Times app from the App Store due to it being unlawful. If the New York Times were to correct the issue, the app could be offered again in China. So, yeah, and, and I looked at this video, and if you want, there we'll, we'll have links on our blog at Neocash Radio, where you can click through and check these stories out yourself. And, and the, you know, the, the article written about the story was, it was very much uh, like the, we mentioned a propaganda our, uh, video from India that right. talked about Bitcoin. Well, this was basically highlighting how the video, there was about a seven and a half minute video it put out, and it was clearly put out as a propaganda video. Um, the, it, 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 it was a reefer madness style uh, hype and, and crazy, you know, the Western culture and Western you know, claws and things like that. It, it was uh, a very much a mind control type social engineering video. And for, for New York Times to call us out and, and to point this out, you know, that, that's too much for China. They need those people to not see the truth at all, I guess. So that's uh, three, three stories about China that are not very good. And Yeah, so, I mean, it's, the New York Times is, just has one story that China doesn't like, and so China bans the whole app. Yep. <laughs> so It's, it's the uh, hammer solution, uh, yeah. right? Yeah, so it's like, hey, if you make a special app just for China disseminating the stuff that we want to disseminate, then right. we'll come back. Or we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll once back. again, the control comes forward, and it's, it's they're getting more... The Chinese officials are getting more and more uh, unabashed 
with just censoring, with just 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 using a hammer to deal with any sort of problem. Yeah. So moving on, um, we're t- we're gonna talk a little bit. Uh, we mentioned last week about the brand fork. And I was happy to see that Swarm City sh- shared our episode on their Facebook page. Yep. So thank you to Swarm City. Uh, Christopher David claims fraud over the Swarm City brand fork. It should come as no surprise that Christopher David of Arcade City is claiming fraud over the changes made by former Arcade City development team. Bernard Lapp is the leading, leading the former team, now rebranded as Swarm City. He states that the move is meant to distance the app and team from Christopher David. And of course, yep. this is not sitting well with Christopher David. Right. I mean, this this Arcade City was was his, his definitely was his baby from the, the beginning, and it was you know an idea that he he definitely carried the torch for, and he is still pursuing it now. Now, keep in mind, Christopher David still has Arcade City. He he can still move that project forward. He doesn't have the funds that were raised during the token sale, and so I think that's what this is really. About. This yeah. comes down to how the funds for the token sale are being used. Now, Bernard and the Swarm City team have a plan for that, and it's out there and it's available. I'm not saying it's a good or bad plan. I'm not, I don't, I'm not a token holder. I have no vested interest in, in this fight either way. I do, however, they have an interest in um, businesses and apps and, and, and uh, especially new um, Ethereum apps and cryptocurrency apps. I have, I have an interest in them being uh, truthful, honest, and uh, tr- you know, transparent, open, that sort of stuff. Good stuff. Good apps. Not not scandals. Not scams. Right. We, right. we definitely try to warn about scams here on Neo Cash Radio. So I I, I think that for Bernard Lapp and the uh, Swarm City team, this is probably a move they needed to make. You know, we talked about it last week, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I I I, I just have a hard time feeling sympathetic for Christopher David, given all of the previous information about his previous dealings and how he has, I, I guess, not really satisfied the need for uh, clarity and uh, transparency in those regards, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I, maybe I have an, an unreasonable expectation. But anyway, moving on. Yep. We have a link here that shows a, uh, there's a Zcash video. So Zcash is something we talked about. It's something that Currently, uh, Randy is, is Randy and I are mining, or Randy's mining, whatever, uh-huh. uh, here at the house, at the the studio. Well, not actually in the studio, because it would be really noisy. But um, So we do have an interest in Zcash. If anything else, it's it just seems like a, uh, the next version of coin that, that could overtake Bitcoin yeah, and, and solve it, a lot of the problems. It definitely has some added uh, features to it. Uh, it's not just a clone. Right of Bitcoin, uh, it has uh, extra privacy built into the protocol, uh, and uh, and it's got some pretty good brains behind it as well. Uh, it, it's it's still got a limit on the amount of transactions, but I believe it's higher right now as it's than Bitcoin is right now, and and uh, it'll probably be uh, more quickly. It'll react more quickly to uh, to to demand when it's there. Yeah. So this video, uh, I believe it was put out by Zcash themselves. It looks like it was published by them. Um, and it basically goes through and it illustrates, I mean, it's not a very technical video, but it, it, it illustrates how they created the initial private and public keys and the technology they used as well as the techniques they used and the security measures. And and, and I'm talking about air gapping and stuff, Darren. This, this video, the, the amount of layers of security that they tried to, to implement. They used uh, write once the uh, CDs or DVDs, whatever, to, to transfer data and, went, and store data permanently. And then when they were all done, the machines, that the air gap machines that were never connected to the internet, um, they, they, the ones they were actually used to make the private key themselves, they were destroyed. So there's like no evidence. You can never see how it was made or undo or go and see logs or, or any sort of memory in that machine. Um, so anyway, go to our blog at neocashradio.com and check that out. It's, it's like, uh, I think a four or five minute long video. It's very interesting. Um, and I guess it is sort of a hype for Z, Zcash video in a way, you know, security is a very important thing. And, and if security, uh, is that one, you know, that one thing that you're going to make a decision on which cryptocurrency you're going to use, then maybe this could help you. But then again, I, I mean, it's, it is just a video. So, yes. um, not to, not to try to, 
blow it up too much or to dismiss it as too little. Uh, moving on, the Monero, the other coin that's very much like Zcash, and we compared, or we talked a little bit about how they, they stack up against each other. They both do things in different ways. But apparently the Monero gains we saw last week were on the back of an announcement that they were going to open up to the Chinese market in, in the coming future. Not With no real explanation how or or what exactly. Now, Monero isn't really used in China a lot. It's not very big there. Bitcoin is obviously the king there. But whatever they, they plan on doing, they really want to make a splash in the Chinese market, which is honestly the biggest market for this sort of coin. Now, if the Chinese government is worried about Bitcoin and capital outflows, well, then Monero is, is you know, 10 times that or 100 times that because Monero is perfect for capital outflows. That's what it was pretty much made for was not being traceable in, in the same the same sense that Zcash is, right? But, you know, they, they both have a different way of going about it. So anyway, that was part of the reason why the Monero went up. Uh, but the other part of the reason was because Bitcoin went up. And I think anytime Bitcoin goes up, all the other cryptos go with it, sort of like the rising tide. Yeah. Um, and that sort of stuff. So it raises all boats. Yep. They say. So anyway, do uh, you have anything else to add, Darren? Well, uh, uh, it was a roller coaster of a week to watch everything happening. Uh, and uh, you know, it's it's interesting that the the news stories that come out when Bitcoin rises and it, and it hits this peak, and just just as a bystander watching the the news hype and the the, the price of things drives people crazy. I right. mean, I think there are people who, I mean maybe have a visceral physical reaction when the price of something hits a certain point, which I mean, okay, I, I, I can almost understand, but come on, man. It's a, it's a number on a screen. Right. At, at the same point, once Bitcoin started to fall, it, it was like the, the news stories went from, Oh, Bitcoin could be doing pretty well to, Oh, Bitcoin just got destroyed. It's like these huge, like negative news stories. And it's yeah. like, wow. I think it's funny. The, 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 the exchanges got stole, scolded for, uh, for all this, uh, volatilism, right. Big volatile. And then as soon as the news came out that they met the, the, the volatility, you know, goes right back oh, down. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think honestly, if, if the people's bank of China officials take anything away from this, it's that. Next time you have a meeting, make sure it's very private and you swear them to secrecy. Because, <laughs> I mean, just the fact that the, these two met, the, the exchanges and the, the People's Bank, uh, just that that alone sends shockwaves down. And, and we explain why. And we explain in the past why we are not very, we're not as hopeful with Bitcoin's future. Well, I mean, the, the fees have been going up. I, I, I did a check today. Uh, there was a couple blocks that had over a Bitcoin uh, total for all fees, which is a pretty high fees. Wow. And, uh, and I mean, I just looked at the last six blocks or so, but uh, there's at least two that had over a Bitcoin in all fees. So uh, we're just seeing those fees go up, 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 up. Yep. And, uh, and you know, if you had a bigger block, you could you would have more volume. So. Uh, a Bitcoin worth of fees would be more transactions or, or could be. At least. I think, I think the big thing when Coinbase takes on either Zcash or Monero, that's yeah, I think that's going to be the, the pressure, the, the big tipping point because the fact that, that they have so much infrastructure built up already. And that if you're just a Coinbase customer or a vendor yeah. that uses their, their product, you know, you, you instant connection to that currency. Right, you know, you, you don't do anything different. So I, and I'm that's what I'm looking for. I I I would imagine that by February, maybe March, that's going to happen. Uh, I think that's a, a a bit of an accelerated timeline there, JJ. But uh, I think I think they'll at least announce the plan by that point. That, I'm not saying yeah. it will be implemented. I'm saying okay, maybe full into implementation by June or July. I think six months to fix up that code and whatnot. I mean, but really, there isn't it, the, the same concepts apply. And I understand the Monero and the Zcash, they function radically different. And there will probably have to be some coding that is, is done. And, and maybe they'll have to talk with the Zcash or Monero teams and, and, and have them help. But I'm sure either one of them would be more than eager to be like, yes, Coinbase, we'll totally come over and help you figure it out. Like today, we'll be on a plane right now. Like, yeah, because that I mean, that would really, 
I, I think that would swing it up there and, and just, just the price would go up, everything, the use would go up, adoption, um, and then it would just start a trend. And then I think that's when you start seeing Bitcoin slip. Is once once the trend comes a different currency other than now I'm not saying Ethereum because Ethereum has a lot of baggage behind it and it's not to say that it's it's good or bad baggage it's just history and I think it's good for Ethereum to have this history right to see the growth of this from where it came to do where it's going to go I think is a great uh, a, a great learning tool for for just mankind you know uh, but Zcash and Monero don't have that sort of history you know that not the DAO you know, the hack, things like that. Right. So, and their functionality is is almost strictly, and not strictly, but almost strictly limited to being a cryptocurrency. That's that's really what it's good for is just that that purchase, uh-huh. you know? So I, I think that's that's where the future is going to go. On. And as we talk about the future money here, and we're not going to speculate. I'm not going to speculate at the price, and we're not going to give you advice to buy or sell anything, but I think the future money is not necessarily Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin... Um, needs to do something drastic. There needs to either either Bitcoin Unlimited or Bitcoin Classic or something needs to happen within the next month or two. Yeah, or it's gonna be game over for that, and someone else will have eaten their lunch. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. I think that's kind of where this is going. I mean, I'm paying fees of fifteen cents for one transaction, and it 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 that's not a really nice consumer uh model to have i understand i pay about that much when i use a credit card but uh but still you know you see the 15 cent fee if you're using bitcoin while it's hidden if you're using a credit card right the merchants pay it basically definitely well uh thanks for joining us uh you can tune into our podcast every wednesday night for awesome neocash radio don't want to miss a single moment subscribe to Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Podcast Addict, LBRY, and more. This is JJ and Darren for Neo Cash Radio. We discuss the future of money today. Tune in to Neo Cash Radio at neocashradio.com. Neo Cash Radio.